Talk to me about the mafia. Sounds like an offer I can't refuse. The Australian Federal Police have for the very first time lifted the lid on the extent of the Italian mafia's activity in Australia. And it's pretty impressive. 50 separate but familiar clans with 5,000 members. That's more than every bikie gang in Australia combined. Bikies are very look at me. Mafia, not so they much. like to keep things close. you got to get your arms around this thing. As was said today, the only way in is through blood or marriage, and the only way out is death. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. We hear about the bikey code of silence, but the reality is a lot of them sing like canaries when they're faced with serious time in jail. The Italians do not talk. You wouldn't happen to know anything about a cigarette truck that got hijacked on Route 401. What's a truck? Don't play dumb with me. WA's Mafia connections have always been there, but a little hazy. We've known Italian families were behind the major marijuana trade in the 60s and 70s, behind Northbridge's illegal casinos in the 70s and 80s. 20 years ago, Fremantle Mafia families put a hit out on police officer Price Scanlon, who's the current boss of the AFP's western region. And 15 years ago, there was evidence the most infamous Mafia cartel, that Sicily's La Cosa Nostra, was operating here. Yeah, the AFP have busted the old world wide open now. The mafia don't talk to outsiders, but they do talk to themselves. And for a long time, they were communicating through the Anom app. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. A year ago this week, the cops brought Operation Ironside, which was based on intel from Anom, to a head. The FBI and AFP executed a bunch of raids and let the cat out of the bag. They revealed they hadn't just been monitoring the Anom app, they actually created it and used undercover agents to convince the crime gangs to start using it. Oh! 383 people arrested, charged with 2,340 offences, six and a half tonnes of illicit drugs seized, and $55 million impounded. Oh, that's a mistake, a terrible mistake. The cops were going through the 25 million messages exchanged on and on, and they quickly realised a lot of them were in Italian. Margarete. And the people sending them all had links to the Calabria region of Italy, which since the 19th century has been the home of the Drangheta Mafia. These guys are behind the big drug shipments. In 2008, one of the 14 Victorian clans imported 15 million ecstasy tablets. How'd they get them in? Tins of tomatoes. No way. I'm being serious. Police had an early person of interest. <gasps> What? The cops are taking their time unravelling the Anom messages and we are seeing further arrests trickle out. A handful of people with Drangheta Mafia connections were very recently arrested for conspiring to import 1.2 tonnes of cocaine. The AFP reckons the Mafia controls 70 to 80% of the world's cocaine trade. Oh, baby! There are four clans from Nangreta operating in WA. One of the families came to the attention of the cops in 2017 when they were found to be harbouring Italian fugitive Bruno Crisafi. Crisafi was a serious player in the international drug scene and he'd been on the run for two years after the Italian police linked him to a major Drangheta cocaine trafficking syndicate. The head of the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission, who at the time was this guy, had discovered Crisafi had bought a one-way ticket from Perth to Rome under an assumed name. Chris Dawson tipped off the Italian police. Crisafi's now doing 20 years inside. Damn it, Chris! Another WA family has been on the radar for international fraud offences. These guys, according to the cops, are often seen betting big here. It's incredible that one small region of Italy can control so much of the drug trade. They outsource. AFP says the Drangheta uses bikey gangs that have links with cartels based in the Balkans, Croatia, Macedonia, Serbia, places like that. People from Italy and people from those countries have been doing business together in WA since the 60s. Corleone family wants to buy you out. The very first time a listening device was used by WA Police, this was back in the mid-1980s, was part of Operation Sinek Doke. Cots put one in the backyard of a bloke called Ivan Jack Marinovich, who was Perth's original drug kingpin. The bug in the backyard didn't actually work, but they had another one in his couch at his home in Balcatta, and that did work. And it picked up a lot of conversations between Jack, who was Croatian, and some of local Italians and Massos who were thought to be involved in mole plantations around Gingit. The traffic and drugs will be permitted but controlled, and Don Corleone will give her protection in the east. It's a market gardening thing. Quite a thing. 
48,000 plants. In a stroke of genius, they put some of them under the flight path of RAF Base Pierce, which was a no-fly zone for the cops. Detectives arrested Marinovich, boxer Tony Patasi, and Greek Macedonian George Kizon, who is best known for being this bloke's dad. George, who was very well liked by the cops because he was always polite, a proper gentleman by all accounts, got off after saying he just stumbled upon the plantation and while he considered pinching a few plants, he couldn't remember if he actually did. Ah, uh, story checks out. The Sinek Dorcade tapes turned out to be an early version of a nom because the cops spent ages going through the hours and hours and hours of conversations. They ended up charging Italians Ralph Romeo and Anthony Ricciardello with conspiracy to import heroin, along with Samuel Snorkel Rossi and Jamie Pissaris. Now, when Pissaris was in court, WA politician Graham Burkett appeared as a character witness. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. Burkett was sacked a couple of years later after it emerged an undercover police operation had found he held a meeting with John Kizon and his then good mate and still good Italian boy, Ray Fazio. He's not the only politician to keep dubious company. No, 10 years ago it came out that former Stirling Mayor Tony Vallalonga had met Drangheta crime boss Giuseppe Maestro Comiso. Vallalonga said there was nothing in it, said he didn't even know how to pronounce Drangheta, which is hard to pronounce, as I've just proved many times. <laughs> but the Italian police tried to extradite him for questioning. They never actually did, though. Surely not all the mafia are Drangheta. You did it very well. It's not. In the 1990s, the National Crime Authority, which doesn't exist anymore, went after another mafia cartel from Calabria, who was called L'Onorata, or the Honoured Society. He certainly has a high opinion of himself. <laughs> Operation Cerberus, which was named after the three-headed dog for some reason, took down Rocco Versace, Sebastian Dom Pizzata, Bruno the Fox Romeo and Salvatore Sam Scafidi. When the cops raided Sam's fruit and veggie business, his wife Franca made the officers tea and cakes. The NCA had the inside running because they had a man on the inside. Drug dealer Francesco Dominic La Rosa was an informant. Jeez, he was straddling the barbed wire fence. Dangerously. La Rosa was in the headline 20 years ago when he successfully claimed a $220,000 tax deduction on drugs that were stolen from him in a drugs deal gone wrong. True story. In the 94-95 financial year, the ATO said La Rosa had earned 440 grand from drug sales and should pay tax on it. He said half the money had been stolen, so he shouldn't owe anything on that part. In 2002, the full bench of the federal court agreed with him, and in 2004, so did the High Court of Australia. What happened to him? Murdered in 2008. <laughs> At least one thing's certain in life. Death and taxes. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.